great. So you're kidnapping me now. I'm doing what I have to do to save my son. In this place, even the Black Fairy cannot control. The dream realm, huh? I thought they'd be like flying pigs or talking donuts or something. Well, if you're not impressed, I can leave you here while I find Gideon. Where is he? Isn't this his dream? It's not that simple. Dreams are, are a maze. And why am I here? You are here to stop you from doing anything back there. If you kill her or banish her before I find my son's heart, he will be lost to me forever. You could have just told me that. Well, saviors have the luxury of always doing the right thing. I do not. Where is he out here? What is this place? I was born here. Not that it was ever much of a home. After my mother left. This isn't Gideon's dream, is it? It's yours. It would seem so. And if you don't mind, I've, uh, I've spent enough time here already. It may well be my dream, but... Uh, my son is still in here somewhere, and I intend to find him. So I watched this scene on my phone once and was like, huh, not really sure what's going on here. I come home, and I get on my iMac, and I watch it again. And I go, huh, not really sure what's going on here. So I watched it again, and I'm doing my screen grab so I can uh, make the side images that you guys always see, and I'm still thinking, what's happening? Like, why am I having such a hard time understanding this scene? It seems kind of contrived and also kind of weird, but at the same time, interesting. Like, it is in no means a bad scene. Like, it's actually quite enjoyable. But I'm, you know, I'm on my third time watching it and having a really tough time thinking of something to say that's meaningful. Normally by my second time watching it, I have the whole review in my head uh, planned out. So, you know, I'm just listening to it in audio as I as I put the pictures together. I'm like, aha, I need to read the episode's summary for um, The Black Fairy because that'll give me an inclination. And that is why there is a spoiler alert. So I'm going to read the summary. I normally avoid these summaries, but I'm like, I can normally at least guess it from the sneak peeks from the trailers, but I was really, really confused from this particular sneak peek. So I thought I will read the summary to you guys. So if you guys do not want to be spoiled by it, uh, please, I guess, um, click like 15, 30 seconds ahead. So here we go. In a flashback, after Rumpel's mother Fiona learns from his fairy godmother that his destiny is prophesized, she does everything in her power to keep from happening. Ultimately, Fiona will have to make a decision that will change the course of both their lives forever. Meanwhile, in Storybrook, Rumpel faces a similar dilemma. So then, after reading the summary, it kind of came together. The, um, excuse me. It kind of came together, though at the same time, I was still a little confused. And you know, I guess my real confusion came from the fact that Emma is with him. But I guess we need you know one of our main heroes to you know help guide the plot along because it's going to take um, more than just Rumple realizing something for the um, other characters to get the news. So Emma had to be there. And I think it's kind of funny how in the beginning of the scene, she's like, so you're kidnapping me now, but they're in like a dream realm. By the way, now we went from a wish realm to a dream realm. Very creative writers of season six. And uh, they were apparently in Gideon's dream, which is really Rumple's dream. And I guess, you know, Rumple has, you know, postpartum depression over, or just depression, over uh, being abandoned, which uh, makes sense. And it says, you know, his uh, destiny, which is most likely to become the Dark One, was prophesized. And his mother does everything to keep from happening. By the way, his mother is named, which I like, the, um, the Black Fairy has a name, it's Fiona. 
Um, I'm actually really curious if um, the other fairies, I know the blue fairy has a name, and I guess Tinkerbell, you know, who would be the green fairy, would be Tinkerbell too. So I, I like the fact that all the fairies have names, and the black fairy is now a little bit more human on some level. And uh, so she's going to do whatever she can to keep uh, Rome from becoming the Dark One. Obviously, it fails, unless there's another destiny that we do not know about. But if they throw in, like, a third destiny, no, that's just that's just not good. So, uh, you know, Fiona makes the decision to abandon him, and that, again, leads to Rumpel's issues. And then it says, in Storybrooke, Rumpel faces a similar dilemma. The dilemma in Storybrooke is how can Rumpel get Gideon's heart back? And I like the fact that Rumpel is talking to Emma about this because he wants to save Gideon. Now, it comes off as both like an adamant father, but the line is a little selfish in my opinion, because I would think Rumpel would say, you know, if we don't get his heart back, he's going to have no free will. Or, you know, if someone ever finds it, he's in danger. So, you know, he's saying my, my son be lost to me. He didn't even say to be to me and Belle, um, you know, but Rumpel's also been kind of a selfish character. So that's just uh, my own critique of it. Anyway, as the scene, you know, came together and as I read the summary and I watched the scene for a fourth and fifth time, it, it all made sense, and I, I liked it. I'm, I liked it, and I'm really curious to see, you know, where it's going to go. But I am really curious how, you know, the dream realm works, if they explain it, which I doubt. You know, how it will change from Gideon's dream to Rumpel's dream. Also, how does one get into a dream realm? I'm assuming you all need to be asleep to do it. I don't think there was a dream realm early, in earlier seasons. I know there was, like, the the netherworld realm where, you know, people who are under a sleeping gyroscope, but that is not a dream realm. So there's a lot the scene introduces, which I like, but I don't want to speculate too much about it because if I speculate, um, the video couldn't end up over 10 minutes and I, I might just ramble. But anyway, just from what I saw, it's good. I, I'm enjoying Robert Carla. It looks like he's going to be, you know, really running this episode along with the Blackberry, which is good. Um, I don't know how much screen time Gideon's going to get, but... I like the actress who plays the back bear, uh, the back fairy, the black bear. I think she's very good. She's very charismatic. So I'm curious to see more of her. I'm also curious if Rumpel's godmother, by chance, is the blue fairy. It would be so hysterical if his godmother is the blue fairy and he ends up just absolutely hating her. So the last thing I want to quickly talk about is uh, ratings for the last two episodes. So Where Bluebirds Fly got 2.69 million views, so it was up. Um, Awake only had 2.51 million, which is good. That's a good little bump. Um, about uh, 500,000 people watched it, I believe. And I was... Uh, no, I'm sorry. No, that's way too much. <laughs> my, my math uh, is not too good. Um, over 100... You know, more people tune in. Just ignore the math. I'm sorry if that came off kind of dumb. But more people tuned in. I didn't, I, I didn't have time to do the percentages before I made the video. But more people tuned in. That's the point here. That's good. So we're up. There's, there's something about the episode that drew people in. I don't know if the Black Fairy will have the same impact. I know that a lot of people are interested in Rebecca Mater and a lot of people are interested in Zelina's character. So I think that was uh, very helpful to make the numbers go up just a little bit more. Again, the other shoe is the has um, the most amount of views this season with 4.11 million. And I think that was due to the fact that it was another Cinderella story in Cinderella does really well with Disney and ABC, et cetera, et cetera. So the only episode that I think can possibly pass the other shoe, minus the finale, because I think a lot of people do tune into a finale, and if a Once Upon a Time finale has less than um, 3 million, I will be shocked. That's a little bit too low. But I think the episode, the musical episode is going to be a big draw, and I think it's going to have a lot of people come in uh, to watch it. I mean, they've been promoting it nicely, which is which I like. I mean, the, the hook... Uh, icon that we saw, you know, with the the rings and whatnot, that's been on for a while. So we know that ABC is trying to get this episode, you know, out there to the general audience, same way that uh, The Flash and Supergirl promoted the musical episode on the CW a couple months ago. I actually am still very behind on those shows. I am still, wa I, I still want to watch them just on my schedule. I can't, unfortunately, watch them during the, uh, the weeknights to air, so I'm just kind of waiting for the seasons to end to watch them at once. But I did watch that musical episode, and it was fantastic. So I'm assuming that the Once Upon a Time musical will be just as good, if not better. And I'm guessing um, the musical will top both the Black Fairy episode numbers and the other shoe. That's just my guess. So anyway, in terms of what we saw in the sneak peek, it's a fun combo because it's Emma and Rumpel and they you know they're essentially like arch enemies but like 
their frenemies. It's a, it's like a fun, it's a very fun combination to see. Um, Jennifer Morrison seems a little wooden here, though she has some like great uh, face acting. I love the face acting on this show is so good, but Robert Carlo just gives off emotion. So uh, Jen might need some acting tips and Jared needs all the acting tips from him and he's not even in this scene. So anyway, I, I enjoyed it. I, I, I'm i enjoying it. I'm looking forward to what's going to be coming with the episode. I, I, I want to see more of Fiona's backstory. I think it will be very fun to watch. Um, as to how it plays into the whole storybook story, I hope it it sequences nicely, and I'm, I'm guessing it will. So anyway, thank you for watching my review. I like the scene. I'm I'm curious how the Blackberry will do number-wise. We'll talk about that uh, next week when I, we get the, probably the first sneak peek for the musical episode. And, uh, and we'll go from there. So when the second sneak peek comes out tomorrow, I will try to review it the, tomorrow. I have a pretty busy schedule, and um, if not, I'll do it Saturday morning. So anyway, thank you guys for watching, and we'll talk real soon.